there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and welcome to Middle Grade Magic reading vlog. So this is a readathon that is happening from September 1st to the 11th and that starts today. It's actually coming up to the evening but that is because I literally came back from Turkey on holiday today so you'll see that I ended the video and just started a new vlog. But yes, I'm looking forward to a weekend bit of reading middle grade books and hopefully just having a bit of chill time and vlogging and after a holiday it's always nice to like de-stress a little bit. So I'm going to start off with, well I just did some food shopping, but I'm going to start off with this middle grade book and that's Enola Holmes in the case of the missing Marquess. This is uh, the first in a middle grade mystery series that's kind of got Sherlock Holmes vibes. So we're following Enola Holmes who when her mother goes missing when she's 14 she gets put into the care of her sisters brothers who are called Sherlock and Mycroft and Sherlock is the famous detective and they're both doing their own mystery cases as they do but she is determined to find her mother on her own rather than go to boarding school but it leads to other missing people and more secrets than she could have imagined. So it sounds like it's going to be a fun mystery book and although the readathon is choose your own adventure and you've got different things to do I'm going to be doing them out of order but hopefully by the end of it I will have have my entire adventure that I've chosen for myself up to scratch. So I'm just going to start off with a light bit of reading to relax my brain before I get into the laundry and the unpacking and all of that stuff that you do post-holiday. Hey, hello, it's your girl again and what a day it has been. It's been my first day back at work and I did just work from home to break me in and I've had some exciting news, some good news, which is which is really nice, but it was like a long day of trawling through the inbox after you've been on holiday. And so my brain is a little bit fried and you can see that my hair ends are not the same. That's because I'm about to do my hair again, so it's gonna be a different color very soon in a different style, which will be part of this vlog, but if you want to know more about my hair wash day routine, wash weekend routine, then check out a vlog that I'll link down below and up above for you because it tells you all about what it's like to deal with my hair. So as you know, I'm going to be going in for a very long experience right now. And I'm going to be watching Bird Box to keep me company. Now Bird Box is a film that came out in 2018. When it came out in 2018, I said I was going to watch it, but as usual, I've taken forever to get around to it because I wanted to read the book first and I think it was last year that I read the book and now I'm finally getting around to watching a film. It's, it feels a bit sentimental to me because I usually watch either the latest John Wick or the next Fast and Furious when I get my hair done but I'm all out of both of those film franchises for something to watch so Bird Box it is and I wanted to give you a bit of a reading update because I have been reading Enola Holmes and I'm halfway through so I'm doing my read a thought wrong. This is actually a young adult and it's not a middle grade, but it's kind of the like late middle grade, early young adult. I was talking to Cara about it and she said it's fine. So it's fine. I make the rules for my own read a thon. But yes, this is exactly the kind of book that I would have loved when I was younger and I know I would have absolutely adored. But personally, my reading taste has moved away from historical middle grades slash historical young adults. So I don't feel it. As much anymore I don't love it as much as I used to so while I'm happy to be along for the ride and it's not a bad book by any means it's doing everything right and just not as invested as I possibly could be and that's down to personal preference and not down to the book so it's really a case of it's me not you but it's very very short I'm only 75 pages in and I'm halfway so I'm definitely going to finish this first book in the series to be truthful with you I'm not just reading middle grade I've got some things to read for work and I've got some other things that I need to read so it's been a bit of uh I'm reading a lot but am I making progress in my middle grade not as much as I could be but anyway let's undo this hair and watch this film and see if I watch anything else as well because of a feeling it's gonna take me some time from the hairdressers and as you can see I went for pink ends so my hair is bright pink at the end 
and I think I'm going to film tomorrow I'm going to paint my nails bright pink to match which will be a lot of fun. I'm going to be filming actually my entire unread TBR so that is going to take me a long time as long as well as some other exciting readathon news and bits and bobs. So it's going to be my bulk film session tomorrow. I'm on my knees, can you tell? But what I wanted to say right now is that I'm very, very tired. I always am after a whole weekend of doing my hair. And I'm going to sit down, have a cup of tea and read a book. What book am I going to read? You guessed it. I'm going to keep reading this and I'm hoping to finish it today. I've only got 60 pages left, so I think I can read another good 30 while I'm drinking tea and then finish it off. But, you know... Around here we read books and we drink tea so I went to the tea advent calendar and I did kind of pull it off myself already. I thought I was going to take this to Turkey with me and do a tea thing in Turkey. It didn't happen so I already know what the tea is. It's the elderberry and echidna tea. It matches my hair colour and it says a rich embrace tingling with fruity warmth. Now I like everything elderberry so I wonder if the second ingredient is going to overpower it a little bit but we shall see gonna have this tea gonna read a good lot of my book and then maybe i'll meal prep be nice to have a real dinner tonight <laughs> yeah i should meal prep and read some more just realized that i forgot to tell you my thoughts in the film bird box so it's not a bad film by any means but it's not a good book to film adaption so i read the book <laughs> sometime last year and it was just so much better than the film. The film changed one of the most scary elements to it which is what happens when you look at the creature and it tamed down what happens when you look at a creature so much and the book was so suspenseful for that reason in particular so I was quite disappointed that it tore that out and I do think of course you've got to kind of change things to make it more suspenseful visually but I don't know, the book just had so much more suspense to me. I like the main character so much more in the book. And also the aliens and how they work makes a lot more sense in the book because it's more consistent. And some of the things that they were doing makes no sense with the way that they changed the aliens, um, like symptoms of seeing the alien. So all in all, it doesn't really make sense as a film. And it didn't have the suspense. So it was good, it was good. It just wasn't the best horror film ever. And I just think you're better off watching A Quiet Place and then reading bird box in my opinion actually just finished reading the Enola Holmes book. Woohoo! So I'm done with my first book for the middle grade magic readathon. It was a solid read, it was pretty good, it had a good mystery to it and there's also a larger mystery that starts here which I think is going to extend into the rest of the series. I don't think I'm going to be reading any more but that's not on the means of it being a bad book, it's just not one for me. But I did still enjoy my experience reading it and it was a short little quick read so it was a good way to start off the readathon and I can definitely see myself recommending this one to children who are interested in mysteries. That was so me. I used to read all of those Lady Grace mystery books. Historical fiction mysteries were my childhood. But moving on, it's time to meal prep a little bit. I did also have that tea and I realised that I've actually tried this flavour before. We had some at work and I had some and I like it. It's really nice. The elderberry flavour is the undertone and the other flavour is the overtone, the stronger one. But it was still a very, very good tea. And what I forgot to mention is that finishing Nola Holmes counts with the prompt of something weird is going on, read a mystery book. So we have the genre of my adventure all down to pat and now let's get cooking. just about to go to bed. 
and I haven't really vlogged today which has been bad because I've done a lot of reading today so I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update because today this morning I did my bulk filming for the month of September and I also filmed an entire video of my entire TBR which involved taking all the books off of my shelves and the, out of the piles which I saw them and then film them all and then put them all back in a different order and also choose some books to unhaul so there's been a whole lot it took most of my day to be honest and after this absolutely exhausted I had no energy to pick up a camera and film I was sick of seeing a camera I was also just struggling a bit because the weather is changing it's really cloudy it's not summer anymore and I struggle with that a bit so today's just been an emotional one and I just decided to spend it by myself I didn't leave my flat and I just had an alone day but I did also do quite a bit of reading I started a flash of fireflies by Aisha Busby and I'm basically only got 50 pages left because it's not too long but it's still quite sizable and I just I just flew through this so it's middle grade magical realism book and I didn't realize how much magical realism there would be in this one and we're following a young girl who who moves to the UK and she goes ahead of her parents to live with her great aunt and she struggles with OCD and the fireflies in this story are kind of a bit of a metaphor stand-in for that. They give her tasks to do and she has to do them so that's the way in which the fireflies work and they're quite fairy tale esque in the way that they handle the tasks that they give her and there's a lot oops I don't know why it zoomed in so much. I hope it didn't do that for too long. Let's zoom out again. So yeah, they give her tasks to do and she has to do them and she's struggling with that and she also knows that her great aunt is keeping a few secrets. It's very fairy tale esque and there's lots more like magical realism elements to it. And while it's not my jam, I do think it's one I would still recommend. I think it tackles the subject of anxiety and OCD and change in a way that's very digestible and understandable for the middle grade audience. So yeah, it's not my favorite thing, which has to do with genre, which is weird because one of my favorite series ever, aka The Raven Cycle is Magical Realism, but it is what it is. It's doing this very well, even though it's not exactly my cup of tea. Hopefully I'll finish this tomorrow, depends on how tired I am after work. And I'm just gonna go to sleep and then wake up and go into the office. Okay, I'm just getting ready for work, but I just wanted to hop on here quickly because I woke up extra early to finish reading A Flash of Fireflies before work. I couldn't do it, I only had 20 pages left and I just wanted to finish, and I did, and it was very, very good. I think my opinion of this just went up by the ending because I found myself feeling a bit emotional by the end of it, and it was just a very good representation of OCD in a magical realism way, and I warmed up to it. So I really enjoyed this, and this finishes and ticks off the prompt for a main character prompt something different from me so main character is something different from me and our character is from asia and i'm not from asia so that is definitely something different so i have a feeling this vlog is just going to be reading updates because while i am doing things they are things like writing they are things like working and there are things like work events and meeting up with friends which are all fun things but not particularly things that i need to vlog and share with the world they're just things for me so most of what i'm sharing with you is reading processing so that's kind of this is just going to be a very chill vlog i think just have a lot going on and i just need me time not vlog time but i am still doing the readathon so i want to tell you about this book i started i started it this morning and i'm halfway through because it is a novel in verse and it's only 150 pages long it's a middle grade novel in verse and we're following our main character who is at school and she wants to understand the world. She really wants to understand things that she doesn't know about, like the oceans and why people do certain things. And she especially wants to understand this fluttery feeling that she gets in her stomach when she looks at her friend, Chloe. So I do think this is gonna be one that's about, well, I can tell what it's about because I'm already halfway through, but it's definitely one that's about like discovering your sexuality and discovering who you are and how that makes you feel and that whole process. And it is very much one of these books where I really think you're going to enjoy this most as a child reader, which is good because that is the intended age audience more so than reading this as an adult. As an adult, I feel like there's a lot of filler. I feel like there's a lot of things in here I don't care about, like reciting these fun facts about ocean creatures. But I know when I was a younger reader, that was the kind of thing that fascinated me. So I can definitely see this doing very, very well with the age audience it is targeted to more than to adults who are looking back and reading it. At least that's how I feel personally. So seeing as I managed to read like half of this book in about an hour or less, probably even less, I'm gonna go have a cup of tea. I even have a cup of tea ready. It's, it's, it's down there, it's there, there it is. It's ginger tea. It was my last actually sachet of ginger tea. So I'm gonna finish that ginger tea and I'm gonna finish this book and I'll come back to you with some final thoughts. <laughs> Friends, hear me out. Hear me out, okay. Do you ever, as a mood reader, 
get in the mood to read a certain part of a book. Like you don't want to be reading at the beginning of a book. You don't want to be reading the middle of the book. You just want to be reading endings. And that can't always happen. So <laughs> in my mood reading era, I'm in the mood to read endings of books. And I think that's why I'm finding all of the current reads that I'm doing in middle grade, just like, this is an okay read. This is an okay read. Then I get to the ending. <laughs> And I really like it. And I figured out that I've actually liked it for quite a while. It just took some adjusting to. So I finished reading The Deepest Breath. And it was very cute and it was very sweet. And there's something about someone finding themselves in a book or being able to understand a crucial part of their identity that will always, always, always pull on my heart. And I'd be heartless to say it didn't because it always, always serves me something. And that's what this one gave. And I was thinking about the writing style in this one, and it is for a younger audience, so I can take the simplified inverse element, and I think it actually works. I just, you know, when I read middle grade, sometimes it takes me a while to, like, put it into the context of this is a middle grade for a middle grade audience, and I think middle grade readers are really going to enjoy this, and I think some people are going to be able to see themselves in this, and it's just kind of monumental that this exists. Also, monumental that it exists in novel inverse form. So, in the end... I really liked The Deepest Breath and I thought it was a very good read and I'm using that for the prompt of a book and that means that I've got, I had to read a cosy book so the setting of my adventure is now a book and it was definitely a cosy book. I knew that she was going to go to the library because it says it in the synopsis and I knew that she was going to find comfort in the library and what she found in the library and therefore I knew it would be a cosy book because I can definitely relate to that and get cosy vibes from reading books all the time. But now I definitely need to go to bed so I won't be tired for work tomorrow. Okay, so I'm here to give you a bit of an update because <laughs> this is purely just a update reading vlog where I talk about what I've read seeing as all of my live stuff I'm doing is not really camera sharing. But yesterday we had our middle grade reading sprints that were hosted on my channel and it was a lot of fun. I was joined by Kelly and Cara and I actually started The Last Bear by Hannah Gold that morning and I was intending to tell you about it once I got to the halfway mark and then tell you when I finished. But during those reading sprints, I actually got from 75 pages through all the way to the very end and I cannot believe it. But this was a middle grade book that's about this young girl who goes to an island with her dad and her dad's a meteorologist so he's going to be measuring the weather and the effects of climate change there and while he's measuring it she just has to be on this island. There's nobody else on it. It's absolutely deserted and, is, and although it's called Bear Island her father says there are absolutely no more bears on the island but she discovers that there is one more polar bear who is lonely just like her. And it's all about that and it does a lot of talking about climate change and littering and the ways in which we are affecting our environment and what we can do but it was also this really beautiful relationship between the girl and the bear and truly if you've been around on this channel for a little bit you know I'm not really a big fan of animal companions in books and books about animals which is weird because I used to love those things when I was younger like Heartland and Animal Ark were totally my jam but not anymore I'm not a big animal person so reading The Last Bear I was just amazed by how immediately captivated by it I was and how much I liked April as a main character and how much I really wanted her dad to change and be there for her. It was a beautiful story and it had beautiful illustrations and I liked this one from the very beginning so it's no wonder that I was able to race through it quickly. And then today I went to visit a friend and I had a bit of a commute time and I also just decided to have a bit of a lazy time in bed and I also started this one during the reading sprints yesterday and that is The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste and this is a middle grade book that's set in the Caribbean and we are dealing with jumbies which are these Caribbean fairy tale creatures that are very evil and shapeshifters and so they're in the forest in this story and it's about these children who discover that there might be a jumbie around and what they can do to protect themselves from the jumbie. And I read this on the live show as well but I really like this dedication which comes in two parts and the first one is to my children Alyssa and Adam without whom this book would have been finished years ago and then I also like the one that says and to all the children of the Caribbean no matter your age see you have fairy tales too. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to read this one. It's like Caribbean fairy tales, you don't get to read that often. And as a child of the Caribbean diaspora, I was very interested in reading it. I am now halfway through. And I can say that I think of the middle grade that I've read so far this month, this is my least favourite so far. It's fine. 
but it's not blowing my mind either. It's quite early middle grade in terms of writing style. It feels very simplistic, but it hasn't got any illustrations, which I thought a book this simplistic might do. And it's straightforward, it's nice enough, and it's definitely got those dark fairy tale elements into it. So it could even be one to read for Goftober, but I do think I would have just wanted a bit more creepiness from this so far. And maybe it'll bring it in the second half of the book because I've got to keep on reading. And I guess I shall update you if I manage to finish Okay, so I'm here to close up this vlog. I have finished reading The Jumbies last night, which was actually had a bit more complication to it than I thought. I thought it was very straightforward and very basic, but then at the end there, it got a bit foggy. I was like, what is the message? And then it really hit home with a bit more complexity to it. And I thought the end bit where everything was coming together was quite suspenseful and really well done and leaned into that fairy tale element a lot. So I did like this one and it was a good read. I don't think it's my favourite. I don't think it's one I'm going to come back to, but it is one that I'm going to recommend to other children as something to read if you want to get something aside from the standard fairy tales that we see and a bit more Caribbean focus. This one fits the prompt of something like a character who's got something like me, which finishes my prompts of required ones because the main character is black, the main character is Caribbean and I am black and I have Caribbean heritage. But I'm also going to make this one double up and fit my genre prompt, which is actually the genre I wanted anyway, which was horror. Horror... <laughs> My food is ready, <laughs> which is good. Horror is a genre that I always want to read more of and then I don't. And I have been actually reading more of it lately and October is coming, so I'll definitely be reading more horror. But I want my choose my own adventure genre to be horror and so this fits the bill too. And I'm ending the vlog here, ending my middle grade reading, but I hope you enjoyed all of these reading updates and seeing my thought process as I went through these books and I completed the middle grade magic readathon prompts with a little double up at the end which means I have my adventure all sorted out and finished and completed and it was a lot of fun. Please let me know in the comment section down below what was the latest middle grade book you have read or you would recommend. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say. Onwards and upwards. Excelsior!